In the field of Alzheimer's disease, broadly speaking, we generally talk about genetic characteristics. So on the one hand, there's a small proportion, maybe 1% of all people with Alzheimer's disease, who have truly dominantly inherited Alzheimer's disease. In these families, people are at risk on a 50-50 basis. Half the families will get it throughout the generations, and they tend to get it earlier in life. And again, dominantly inherited Alzheimer's disease really comprises maybe 1% of the, but very important because people who have the genetic mutation will get the disease 100% of the time. That affords us the opportunity to look at the biology of what's going on in them, and it turns out that here's where abnormal amyloid processing is uniform in people with the disease. Therefore, that's part of the amyloid hypothesis. But <clears throat> what about the other, but what about the other 99% of the people with Alzheimer's disease, so-called sporadic Alzheimer's disease? Nevertheless, it still sort of runs in families, as most diseases do. That is, if you have a first-degree relative with heart disease, cancer, diabetes, your risk for those conditions is increased as well. Same thing with Alzheimer's disease. If you have a first degree relative with Alzheimer's disease, you may have some genetic susceptibility. So there are probably 30 other susceptibility genes, meaning your risk is up or down depending on where you live with those genes. There's one in particular called apolipoprotein E, normal protein, we all have it. It serves to transport lipids around the body it comes in three varieties, E2, E3, E4. <clears throat> Turns out, if you've inherited the E4 variety from either mom or dad, your risk is up maybe three or four fold over the general population. Now, if you're unfortunate enough to inherit a four from mom and a four from dad, homozygous, then your risk is up maybe 10 to 14 times over the general population. And based on that, there actually is a clinical trial underway now called the generation study looking at people who have two copies of the E4 apolipoprotein e gene. So I, I think that the genetic characteristics are real and it may help us look at new pathways for treatments and, and are, are exciting avenues to, to follow. Clinically, we generally do not do genotyping for people at, with regard to their risk because we would have people, we would make the recommendation to most individuals to do lifestyle modifications, get into clinical trials anyway. So the, the genetic information may or may not be beneficial on an individual patient basis.